Hey guys. I'm so excited for tonight's training. Um, we are going to be doing everything recruiting, signing distributors, because that's probably the number one thing that you guys always want help with, advice on. It's the thing that almost everyone feels like they struggle with, especially as a new distributor. So we are going to dive in. Tiffany is on here with me and kind of Cassie also. <laughs> She's on here by default because they're together. Um, and so um, we are going to go over some of our best tips for finding distributors. We're gonna give you some, some scripts, some post ideas. And then we're actually gonna walk you through some different tasks that you can do tonight and like every day to help grow your confidence in recruiting and signing distributors and also launching new distributors. Because I know that's the next step, right? You finally sign a distributor and you're like, okay, how do I make them work, okay? So, and I just want to uh, preface this whole Zoom with you guys. Tiffany and I are not perfect. We just share the opportunity consistently. We've grown our confidence over time. We still have people that ghost us. We still have people that say they're gonna join and then they don't join or they don't join when they say they're gonna join or they join and they don't work, okay? So you guys need to know that like we're top leaders in the company and all of that stuff still happens to us. We've just been doing it longer. <laughs> so um, we're gonna talk about first where you find potential distributors and you guys, literally everywhere, but I'm going to throw out some examples for you and things that you might not be thinking about um, when you're making your list of potential distributors. So the first thing is people that you love following on social media. That's a given. It could be your best friend. It could be someone you haven't talked to in eight years. It could be someone from high school or middle school or someone you added from host to post. But if you are attracted to their page already and they're not already in a business, that's a really good sign that they would be a natural at working on social media. And I'm sorry if you guys can hear my dogs in the background for whatever reason, they like to gather around me for Zooms. So um, people that want the products but can't justify spending the money right now. Perfect candidates, you guys. And I'm gonna share a message here in a little bit that I have used in the past that you can tweak for people that you're talking to, again, from host to post, or maybe they reached out to you about a product and they can't swing whatever amount it is. And it's crazy, you guys, there are people that don't have $39 for TFX, but then will spend $99 to join their own business, to start their own business, to make an extra income. So do not let someone not being able to afford the products limit you from offering the opportunity to them. Because even if they can't afford to start today, you've just planted a seed with them that they now know that they can try the products while making extra money. And that was part of my story. I wanted to try the products, but I didn't want to, I just couldn't justify spending that kind of money on myself at the time. But I thought, okay, if I can get some free products by sharing them with my friends, make a little cash, then it's gonna be much easier for me to justify spending the money. And that's one of the main reasons I joined this business, you guys, and I've been here for almost 10 years. So think about that. Some of your potential customers could be here 10 years later if you will just offer the opportunity to them. And so many times I think we, we think that people know that they can join us, right? It seems like that's a given, right? If anyone wanted to join us, they would just reach out and ask. A lot of people don't know that. They don't understand how this industry works. They don't know if we were actually hired or if we signed up to join this company. You think that's common knowledge, but it's not. The other thing is people generally don't think they would be good at this business. So if you don't plant that seed with them, they just assume you wouldn't think that they would be good at this. And people need that confidence boost. So you planting that seed about the business with them helps them at least be thinking about it in the back of the mind, back of their mind, like, oh, that girl thinks I'd actually be good at that business. She's crazy, but now it's in her brain. Okay. And she's going to continue, or he is going to continue to watch you po post. And that's going to continue to build their confidence. Um, People that do host a post for you and get a decent response. And I'm saying even a couple of comments, you guys, is a decent response on a host a post. Mention the business to those people, especially if there's someone you look at their page or you know them from some part of your life and you think they'd be good at the business, mention it to them. And we'll give you a script for that. I know Cassie shared one the other day that I have um, saved that I can share with you guys. But again, just mentioning the business, hey, 
your network is clearly all over social media. Have you ever thought about making some extra income with me? You'd be great at this. Okay, just dropping that seed again. Um, people that have good interaction on their page, again, we kind of already talked about that. But if you have a new friend or something and you see that their posts generally get a lot of likes or comments, they're, that means they're typically a likable person, okay? And I always tell my potential distributors, you don't need to be outgoing. You don't need to have a certain personality. You don't need to know a ton of people. If you are just an actually kind, genuine person, you will do amazing at this business. So when I'm looking at someone's social media accounts, that's what I'm looking for. Do they just seem like a decent human being? Then they're probably a great candidate if they're also willing to learn and are self-motivated. Um, people watching your stories, this is another good place for you guys to find people that are creeping on you <laughs> that maybe haven't reached out um, or that are creeping on you. Maybe you have talked to them before and they're still interested. This is a good place to find new people to reach out to and then also people that you need to follow up with. Because typically when someone's interested, they will click and they will be watching even if they don't comment and message. So you can go ahead and uh, bite the bullet and message those people that are viewing your stories. People that comment on host to post, obviously we're gonna give you guys some host to post examples later. Those are obviously great potential hosts or great potential distributors if they've commented on a business host to post. Um, and then current customers, you guys, some of your current customers, customers are going to become some of your best distributors, okay? Because they're going to fall in love with the products. It's going to be an easy transition to getting them from customer to distributor because they're going to want to share them with their friends and family. So again, make sure though, you're not assuming they know that they can join because some customers will just order the products forever. And had you just said, hey, you're already loving the products. Why not make some extra money and share them with your friends? It's like a light bulb goes off and all of a sudden they're like, oh my gosh, I could do that. <laughs> I'm already telling my friends about them. I might as well make some extra money. So don't assume that people know that they can do this too. Um, and then the uh, last two things I want to mention before I pass it over to Tiff is make sure when you are looking to start building your team or continue growing your team, depending on what part of your business you're in, that you're not just looking for people that need extra money. Okay, that is great. Obviously, a lot of us joined because we need extra money, but sometimes the people that need this business, that want this business, aren't the people that from the outside you can even tell need it. They might be struggling financially and you have no idea based on their page. They might not be struggling, struggling financially at all, but they wanna spend more time with their kids or they wanna go back to school and they can't do it with the job that they have. Or, like Tiffany's story and so many of, if you guys were on the Sunday night Zoom, people join this business for a distraction. They join it for the community. They join it for the friendships, the fun, just, I mean, there's a million other reasons that people join the business. So don't just be looking for people that need the extra income. You're really looking for people that you want to work with. And when you make that mental shift, it'll change the type of people that you are recruiting and attracting into your business, okay? So um, people that need the income are fine, but make sure that's not your only requirement. Um, and then the last thing is making sure that you're planting seeds daily and that you are setting your expectations correctly for recruiting, okay? I'm not saying there are not unicorns. There are people on this Zoom that joined day one, okay? The first day that they were talked to about this opportunity, they jumped in. And that's kind of how I was, right? I was a unicorn. I just was like, sure, here's my money. I want to try the products anyways. But I'm always planting seeds daily because most people are not unicorns. Most people need a little bit of time. Most people are nervous. Most people are broke. Most people um, think they're too shy or don't know enough people or need to talk to their husbands or their significant others. Most people are not going to join on day one. So if you just plant a bunch of seeds one day and then you just wait and you wait for those seeds to come around and you wait for them to talk to their husbands and you wait for them to be less busy and you wait for them to overcome their fears, okay, you're wasting all of these other days waiting on those people. You're wasting those unicorns that you might find the next day because you're not sharing the opportunity. A lot of those people will come around eventually. But what happens if you talk to 10 people today? And even if all 10 of those people sign up over the next six months, if you never plant another seed, you're going to be right back where you started. Okay. So part of being a strong recruiter is planting seeds every single day and trusting the process, knowing that some of the people you talked to yesterday are going to eventually join and the week before and months before. And that's part of the reason that Tiffany is such a strong recruiter. And many of you guys that are on here that sign a lot of distributors, that's the reason is because you've been planting seeds 
daily and you're just consistently now getting a harvest because of the consistent planting that you've done. Um, so I want you guys to drop in the chat how long it took you to join after the first time you found out about the business. How long it took you to actually join either after someone reached out to you about it or you saw it on Facebook, how long it took you to join. Okay, two years, six months, couple months, <laughs> got a few, a few hours in there, eight and a half years, you guys. <laughs> okay, so for all of you on here, I want you to, to truly look at this chat and think there are people <laughs> that you haven't talked to yet that might take a few weeks, a few months, or years to join your business. So if you quit too soon, if you give up too soon or you stop planting seeds or you never plant the seeds, a lot of these people that are on the Zoom right now would have never ended up on your team, would have never joined you because you gave up too soon. So give other people the same grace that your distributor or your sponsor gave you, okay? So if it took you six months to join, how dare you quit before six months? That makes no sense. Um, and if you're a unicorn and you joined in a couple hours, Okay, you're a unicorn and just know that some people are gonna need a little bit more time than that. I see a few unicorns on here that joined right away. So that doesn't mean you guys get to give up on people in a day, um, but seriously, look at the chat and look at that, you guys. There, It takes time for people to join. You're not doing anything wrong. You're not saying anything wrong. You don't have any, you're not missing some sort of special message that Tiffany and I have that you don't have. You're not missing anything. It's just the consistency, the patience, learning how to follow up with people and learning how to address their objections and address their fears and having the confidence when you're talking to people to help build their confidence so that they will eventually join. So I'm going to pass it over to Tiffany and she is uh, going to share some of her tips with you guys. Hello, everyone. Um, okay, so this like led right into what I was going to ask because the very first thing I'm going to touch base with y'all on is how to post, how to recruit within your post. Um, so I want to ask a question, drop a one in the chat if you joined because you saw someone's post. Did you see someone? Yeah, there we go. If you saw someone's post, and that's why you ended up joining, whether or not, however, the time frame was that you watched their journey. Guys, posting is important. It is, um, you know, not the only thing that we do that requires success in this business, but it is your open door sign. Just like we talk about all the time, as far as posting about the products, the same thing with the business. People don't know what you do if you are, don't post about it. I have a lot of times people will ask me um, when I start to talk to a customer about a product and then I think that they would be good about the, at the business and they're like, oh, I didn't know I could do that. They just haven't seen that post yet, obviously, because I'm consistent with posting. But the point is a lot of people don't realize that they can do this business with you. So that's why it is important to post about it daily. So I, I mean, one of my rule of thumbs is every single day, you should at least have one opportunity post up and opportunity posts look different all across the board. You're going to have very short and simple. And I will put um, these in the success squad telegram app in a minute so that you can see them when I get done talking, I will upload them there. Um, but I just want to kind of go through a little bit with you because I think a lot of people think that you have to get super detailed and lengthy just to have an opportunity post. And that's not every day, guys. You don't have to have a huge story, lengthy opportunity post every single day where people click more. Sometimes those are difficult to write. Sometimes those need some, some heart and, and some you know deep concentration. And you may not have that every single day. Sometimes you just need to pop up a, hey, guys, I'm swamped and I'm looking, or is anyone looking for a side gig that they can work 100% off? their smartphone and make extra cash. I need 10 people ASAP. I mean, something short and simple. You can put that in a color block. You can pop that up with a selfie, like just mix and mingle these opportunity posts, guys, along with your personal post, obviously, as well as your, uh, your product post, because people need to see all aspects of this business. And you have to remember that number one, just because people do not like or comment your posts do not mean that nobody wants to do this business with you. A lot of times, this is a sensitive business that we're in. Think about it. Like 
weight loss for one, needing extra money for one. There's a lot of people that don't want other people to realize or know right away that they need extra money. Because just like Alyssa said, a lot of people, you would be surprised that need this or want this, that would be amazing at this, look like they have everything put together from the outside looking in. It's those people that need this the most. And that's why we always say, do not judge someone by the, asking them about the business because you have no idea what they what's going on inside. So that's why it's important to post these every single day, even if you don't see likes and you don't see comments because you don't know who is watching you. And the same thing about the, the business or the product side, it's the same people. People watch you and they will reach out to you. That's why we stay consistent. That's why we post about these things every single day because this is our open door side and people are watching us. Now there is times that you want to get um, really super personal with those posts. You want, you want to be relatable. You want to be real and raw. You want people to know why you joined because there's someone else, just like Alyssa said, that's out there just like you. And for, for my situation, maybe they're not looking for extra income, but maybe they're going through a really hard time and they need something to distract them from a loss. And, but because I shared my story, now they want to do what I do. So you got to put yourself in that situation. Did you join to pay off debt? Did you join to pay off student loans? Did you join because you have credit cards that you, you want to cut up? Did you join because you want to save to build a house? Did you join because you want to pay for childcare, pay off your car, pay off your, your mortgage, whatever the case is? Why did you join? It's really important for you to get real and raw with those posts sometimes and just talk about that. It's okay to be bold because there's other people just like you that want to hit those goals too. Maybe you just wanted extra gas money. Well, I can guarantee you there's probably someone on your feed that just wants some extra gas mm -hmm. money too. So just remember that whenever you are coming up with posts, they don't all need to be like that. That is not 100% what an opportunity post needs to look like every single time. But it is important to get really raw and transparent with why you join, because 90% of the time there's other people out there that want to join or want to um, have those things released off their shoulders as well. And they didn't know that, hey, I could join this business and I, it could pay for my groceries. Like that, that could be amazing. So don't forget about those things whenever you're posting the people that you could reach out to. Um, the next thing I'm gonna mention really quick before I pop it back to Alyssa is boosting old posts. So this is super, super important. And if you don't know anything about the Facebook algorithm, that's a whole social media Zoom all on its own. But basically every single time that you post um, is it's, it's a way that people obviously can, can, can see things. It's the way that Facebook's brain kind of works, but you don't want to bog down, I guess you could say your brain, your Facebook brain by posting too much. That's why we typically say post about three times a day, if that a personal business and a product um, but the cool thing, guys, is when you go back to your old post and you comment on them, and I'll give you some ways to boost in just a second, but when you comment on those old posts, they pop back up in your newsfeed. And so people don't, they look like brand new posts, but guess what? They didn't affect your Facebook brain, your algorithm. They didn't affect it or hurt it at all because now people are going to your feed and it's just like, they're just seeing your post over and over and over again, which is really, really, really cool. So here's a couple ways that you can boost a post. And we'll get into a couple of these in a little bit deeper. So if you hear me talk about something, just, just hang on. We're going to talk about it. But um, so the very first thing is dropping an application in the post. If you have an application, we'll go over that in just a second. Um, but that's a great way to boost a distributor post. Another one is just a darn emoji. Something so simple, guys. Don't overthink it. You can scroll through your page and just simply put an emoji in it and boost it with an emoji. The next one is a picture. You could easily have, um, you know, if you're creating one for a story, you could um, crop it and then you can boost it with the picture. And it just says, it could be your face that just says, hey, I'm hiring. Here's my, here's my phone number. Um, the next one is just words saying, oh my goodness, if you've ever been hesitant to join me because of the cost, now's the time. 
because we have $39 kits right now, guys. So, I mean, you could boost it with words, but you, and all you do is just comment on it and it's going to boost that post for everybody. It's going to bring it back into your newsfeed, which is insanely important. I love doing those at least twice a day, if I possibly can, morning and night. That's the main two times that people are scrolling social media. So if I can get to boost before people start scrolling, when they start scrolling, guess who they're going to see? Tiffany, right before they go into their nine to five job. Hi, that's me. And then right whenever before bedtime, when they're about to go to work and have to go into their nine to five job the next day, who do they see again? Tiffany. So I love that because I'm constantly popping in their head. So you've got to remember that just like Alyssa pointed out earlier with how long it took you all to join, people are going to watch you. You will have distributor unicorns, but not near like you will have loyal customer unicorns. Distributors have to think about it. The majority of distributors have to think about it. It's just one of those things society teaches us that it's normal to go to school, get, you know, graduate, then go to a normal job, work till we're 60 something years old, work for 50 cent raises. Like that society just has that beat into our heads. So people have to think about it because it's so outside the norm and that they have, they just have to process it. So they want to watch you. They want to see that journey, guys. And they want, I mean, and you keep popping up in their head because you keep popping up in their time timeline, then they're eventually going to want more information. And then eventually they're going to want to say yes when it is their time. And so um, just make sure that you are boosting your posts and you're making sure that you post every single day because that is extremely important. And I will shoot this back to you, Alyssa, and then I will put the um some samples in the success squad telegram perfect okay so um just to reiterate some things you said posting is a form of follow-up you guys that's the way i look at posting you're planting seeds through host to post by reaching out to people you think would be great at the business posting is just reiterating what you've told these people in messenger so like she said, there will be people that come to you because of your consistency in posting. It's not usually just one post that they see and they're like, where has this been my whole life? It's the repetition and continuing to see it and seeing that you're serious about this opportunity that attracts people to your inbox. But the way I think of it is I'm talking to people and reaching out to people through Messenger. Posting is my way of following up with them. Constantly, I might not be in their inbox every single day, but they're going to be seeing me post about the opportunity every single day. And then I'm, I swear that people all of a sudden just be like, okay, like send me more information. What do you like, what is it? Or tell me how much it costs, but it's the consistency of it. It's not one particular post that's going to make you a million dollars. So don't stress over every single post. Tiffany's giving you a variety of different types and ways to talk about the business on your page. Um, so make sure that you are just giving a variety when you are posting. Um, okay. So, um, this, the second thing, and you kind of addressed talking about why you joined. I also want to make sure you guys know that you don't need to have some sort of crazy success story to start posting about your journey with the business. You don't have, that's not where a lot of your distributors are gonna come from. It's not gonna be the fancy cars or the freedom of time. It's gonna be, like she said, paying for your groceries, getting your gas, because people can wrap their brains around that. People can't wrap their brains around a $20,000 bonus. They can't wrap their brains around getting freedom of time or going on vacations. Like that's great. And you can talk about it when you get there, but that's not where most of your distributors are going to come from. Your distributors are going to come from following your journey and they don't really care where, how far you've been, how long you've been in the company. They don't care that you've reached whatever rank. They don't even understand what that means. You guys, <laughs> they, they really don't. An executive and an ambassador to someone on your page they, they don't know anything about it. Okay. They want to see that you are enjoying what you're doing and that you are making progress, that you're making friends and that you're making some extra cash. That's really all people care about. They care that you're serious about that, about the opportunity and that you're going to help them if they join. Cause that's one of someone's biggest fears when they join is like, I don't know what I'm doing. So if you can show them by posting and following up that you're serious about this, they're much more likely to join you because they know and trust that you're not going to desert them if they do decide to join and that you're going to teach them how to, um, to work. So the next thing we're going to talk about 
is probably the most important part of recruiting and it's dealing with objections. You know, I'll have new distributors all the time tell me nobody's interested, nobody wants to join this and that. And I'll say, okay, well, let's talk about the conversations. Like if you've reached out to people or if you've done host to post, like send me screenshots. And a lot of times it's just people having objections. They're not even getting told no, <laughs> they're getting told, I just don't think it's a good fit for me. They're getting told I'm just too busy for something like that. Or I've done something like that before and I failed. I don't consider any of those no's, <laughs> you guys, like pretty much unless they just blocked me, <laughs> like that would be my only form of no. Everything else is just really rooted in fear. So the way that you handle objections is a key to your success in recruiting. So this doesn't mean that you're going to be pushy or that you're going to have some fancy message that's going to make people change their mind in an instant. Your job when someone has an objection, again, is to help build their confidence and gently say, I understand that, but here's why that's not truth. Okay. So if you think of that, every time you get an objection, I hear you, but this is why it's not true. This is how I know that you can still do this. That's your job. It, your job is not to say, okay, well, let me know. Let me know when you feel less busy. Let me know one day when you feel more outgoing and you want to try this business. Do not ever, 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 if someone gives you some sort of excuse, do not say, you know, thanks for getting back to me. Let me know if you ever change your mind. Don't do it. And if you've been doing it, stop doing it because people will not change their mind. They will not wake up one day and say, you know what? I really would love to post on social media and make an extra income. I really would love to message my friends and family and ask if they'll buy products from me. Okay, that's not gonna happen. So make sure instead of saying, you know, let me know if you change your mind, you get the conversation to just go just a little bit further. Again, your goal is not to make them change their mind that day. Your mind, your job is just to kind of plant a little seed of doubt of, you know, what if she's right? <laughs> like, what if I really could do that around my busy schedule? What if I really could do it with the personality that I have? What if I could learn to grow my network? So your job is to address the objection, you know, tell them like, I get it, but then you're also going to help them get over that. Okay. So um, I want really quickly for you guys to, let's just see what some of the objections, we have 58 people on here. Let's see what some of your objections were before joining, okay? And maybe you were a unicorn, but you still had one of these fears. So your objection or fear before joining, if you had one, we're gonna, okay, <laughs> someone said scam. Hey, we, got, we had someone that thought it was a scam that joined. Way to go, Christine. Um, how about this? Drop a one if you're too busy, drop a two if you were too shy, Drop a three if you didn't think you would know enough people. Drop a four if you didn't have the money. Drop a five if you had done something like this before and you failed. And drop a six if you were just scared about what people would think. And then you can just drop a bunch of random numbers if you are a combination of all of them, okay? All right, so <laughs> looking at the chat, pretty much everyone had one of these things going for them. And almost every single person, probably every, I, I would say 99.9% .9 of people that you talk to are going to have one of these objections. So you need to be prepared for that. I go into a conversation expecting it. <laughs> I try to figure out what their fear or their excuse is going to be before they even tell me what it is. Because if I look at their page and I see they have several kids, I know they're probably going to tell me that they think they're too busy. I know if someone's a college student, they might tell me they feel like they're too young or they're too busy. Okay. I go into every conversation expecting an objection and just ready for it. So it doesn't discourage me when I hear it because I was already expecting, I was just waiting to see which one it was going to be. Um, and I'm going to, I'll talk about this one objection and then Tiff's going to cover a few, but as far as the too busy objection, um, I'm going to throw a script in the chat. You guys, with these scripts that we're handing you tonight, you're going to have to tweak it based on the person that you're talking to. So make sure you read it before you send it to someone and, and tweak it to fit their personality. But one of the things that I like to point out to potential distributors that think they're too busy is that success in our industry is built on consistency. It's not built on long hours every day. If you can learn the business, you can be really efficient and effective in small pockets of time. Um, I also like to say that this is the most realistic second job for someone that needs extra money and is super busy. Because it's true, right? Like if you're already too busy to work from your phone, but you need extra money, you're going to be too busy to go 
work at a restaurant down the road or be a server or to drive Uber Eats or whatever, if you're already that busy, there's no way you're going to be able to fit in another normal job. Um, and then one of the other things I always say is this is one of the only jobs that you can work at that will eventually give you more time in return. Because when you work hard and you have a residual income, if you will learn how to do it, you can actually end up with more free time down the road. And that doesn't happen in corporate America, you guys. The harder you work, the better you do, the more responsibilities you're given and the more hours you have to work. And it's not that way here. And so I like to point that out to people. So I'm gonna throw this message in the chat for you guys. This is specifically for, this is one that I actually sent to someone that joined that said she was too busy. And you guys can copy and paste anything we share in the chat tonight to the notes in your phone. And then Tiffany, I will let you cover the others. Yes. So guys, I don't take no for an answer. And I don't mean that that I am pushy and that I am, I mean, I have several distributors on here that I've signed and I can assure you they would say that I didn't like twist their arm and, and pull them in here. But I'm telling you, I don't quite, I don't take no for an answer. So if somebody tells me no, the very first thing I'm going to say is, oh, I hate that. Why not? Because my whole thing is I want to know why they said no so that I know how to rebuttal their no. Because, okay, they're shy. All right, I'm shy. I got you. I know exactly how to rebuttal that. But let's say you're outgoing because I know that that may be a little hard. Okay, well, I'm outgoing. How do I talk to somebody who's shy? Well, that's when you would share someone else's story. Well, one of my sideline, upline leaders so-and-so is painfully shy and she's been really successful in this business, dot, 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 dot. Guys, I mean, you don't have to always use yourself as an example. I have one kid. So if I'm talking to someone that has five plus kids, I can tell you at least four people on this team that is extremely busy with children that I can go, well, we have several leaders that have three plus children that are extremely successful. If I have a nurse that I'm talking to and she wants to come home, but she's just kind of, she's worried about the thing. Okay, Erin Tweed, she was a nurse and she came home. Like there's people all across with different stories that you can relate to. It doesn't have to be just you. But if they say that they're shy, that's a great, and I'll, we'll throw some stuff in here in just a second. I have Cassie that's going to be throwing messages in a minute. I kind of went out of order. But um, but my, my point is that regardless of what, ever their excuses, we have a rebuttal for that. We can help them because they are just as worthy. Like there's no mold that you have to fit to be successful in this business. There's no personality type that you have to fit to be successful in this business. There's no age. It doesn't matter your location. It doesn't matter if you have 10 people in your town or 20,000 people in your town or 200,000 people in your town. You can be successful in this business. So it doesn't matter what you have on your plate because thankfully we work for a business that allows you to fit it in the small pockets of the day. It's just a matter of finding out there why guys. And so just like Alyssa said, when you hear that, no, don't shut down. That's the biggest key and the biggest tip that I can give you out of all the messages that I'm fixing to share is when somebody tells you, no, do not shut down. Find out why they said no. There's nothing wrong with asking that question. It is not rude. It is just you simply saying, oh, I hate that. Can I ask why? Then you find a lot of times they may just think that they, they may think they're too busy. Maybe they don't have the $99. And let's, right now, let's just imagine kits were $99, okay? Because they will go back to $99 and you need to have confidence of the $99 kit. So I'm going to give you my, my rebuttal really quick. And Cassie's going to put this in. If somebody says that this business is too pricey for $99 um, or they can't, they can't afford it. I'm going to say, I understand that's even more of a reason we need to get you started. That was the very reason I knew I needed this. If my plan A wouldn't let me spend hundred dollars whenever I needed to or wanted to, then obviously I needed a plan B. Do you know when you would be able to jump in so we can get you started making extra money? Okay, so always, just like Alyssa said, always relate to them, always understand where they're coming from first, and then go into why this is still able to be done. Okay, the next thing, okay, so with the $39. I understand that. That's even more of a reason we need to get you started. That was the very reason I knew I needed that. 
I am excited to share with you can join for only $39 with a promotion code that I can give you right now. Would that work for you? Guys, it's okay if they still can't afford $39. You're going to have people that can't afford it. You're going to you're going to have to realize that some people it's just their time and they have or it's just not their time and they have to wait. And just like Alyssa said, you're going to have to add people to your funnel constantly. So even though you have Sally over here that says, okay, well, I'll get paid on Friday 30. I can do the $39 or 99, whatever the kit is on Friday. That doesn't mean that you don't add someone else to your potential list. Just because Sally said that she could, that she would sign up on Friday, because guess what? How many have ever said, or how many people have ever had someone say that they were going to sign up on a certain day and that certain day comes and they didn't sign up. Right. Okay. So it happens. It happens to us all. So don't set yourself up to lower your potential list just because you're waiting for Sally to sign up. Always add to your potential list. Always add to that funnel because just like Alyssa said, that the, the, the harvest will come and the seeds will pour out. They will come. But don't sell yourself short by not asking more people or not posting or not working your business or not being consistent just because you have so many potentials lined up to sign up. Um, so those are those two as far as the money side of things. And you really can truly, there's so many things that y'all can say about the money if they if they can't afford it. And if y'all, if you're a leader, or you're someone on here and you have a great message, feel free to put it in the chat as well. But just relate to them. I mean, and just tell them, you know, I am so excited for when you are able to sign up. I am so excited to help you change your finances. You deserve to be able to have more money at the end of the month. And I'm excited to be able to coach you and mentor you to success because I promise you when they do have the money, they're going to build that trust in you and they're going to want to sign up because they trust that you're going to be able, you're, you're going to really truly want to help them. So don't give up on people just because they don't have the money. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is she's uh, Cassie's going to share this hesitation video with you. This has been really great. If I have people that just straight up give me every excuse in the book, um, whether they're busy there. And I think it was Emily Duva, I want to say, that shared this with me whenever we were at Alyssa's house one time. Um, but it's a really great little blurb with a tiny, tiny video of excuses. And I've had people watch that video after giving me every excuse you can possibly imagine and go, OK, you're right. I'm in. Um, the next thing is, you know, obviously being painfully shy. I went out of order. This is my personal message. If you're not painfully shy, you will need to edit this because this is my message, but you can always tweak it and say, I have a leader. I have a sponsor. I have a sideline leader that is painfully shy, dot, dot, dot. Um, so let's say somebody has tried this business and failed or tried a business and failed. How many times have we gotten that before? Well, I've tried five years ago, or my great aunt Karen tried 12 years ago, and she didn't, she just didn't succeed. I mean, we all, we've all gotten those people before. And so just relate to them, guys. I like to, I like to hype up our team. When I hear that, I'm like, oh my goodness, I am so sorry that you did not succeed your first time or you weren't successful. Um, I do have to say that our team is outstanding. I don't know if you got the support, love, and training from your old team, but I truly believe that determines your level of success, not to mention your own personal drive and motivation. I would love to give you a different experience if you're willing to give it a try. Um, but just let them know. I mean, because 90% of the time you're going to go, oh, I didn't get no training or, oh, I, I don't know. My sponsor quit or I, I wasn't, I didn't know what I was doing. And a lot of times that is it. They didn't have a good experience because they were not on a good team, whether that was this company or somewhere, somewhere else. Or maybe it just wasn't their time, guys. Like maybe it wasn't, that wasn't their path and it's time now. But the point is, is just get rebuttaling their excuses in a very positive way. You're going to get people that say yes. But guess what? Even after rebuttaling, I still have people that are like, well, you know, let me think about it. And I'm like, okay, that, that's totally fine. When would be a good time for me to check back with you? I'm going to send some prayers your way that as far as just praying that, you know, you 
you come up with a decision that's best for your family. Because I want them to know that I want them on my team, but I want them on my team if they want to be on my team. And so give people grace and remember, just like Alyssa said, that we all had obligations or, you know, things that stood in our way when we joined, we all watched for a certain amount of time when we joined, and they may just be that person that needs to wait. You can't talk everybody instantly into this business. You can rebuttal their excuses. You can show them people just like them that were successful in this business. You can give them the reasons why they would be successful in this business, but you have to also understand and realize that they will join when it's their time to join. And that doesn't mean that you are not doing a good job. So that's one thing you'll have to take off your shoulders and realize as long as you're posting, as long as you're asking, as long as you are showing up and you're staying consistent and you're following up and you're doing all the things that we're telling you to do, you're doing your job and you're doing amazing. And these people will, they, they will sign up, but you, you, you can't hold your head um, and think that you are doing something wrong just because they said no, and it's not their time. So um, I think that was all of my things, I think. Perfect. I am just adding a message in the chat really quick um, from the objection I got the other day. I'm not good at selling stuff, and I'm rather shy. Okay. Um, and you may have already thrown some in there, but I'm going to throw in what I told her. And you guys, this was like objection after objection with this girl, because she started with, couldn't afford the products. So then I gave her the message about, would you try them while you, you know, use them that, or tr try them while you make extra money. And then she was like, I'm not good at selling things, blah, blah, blah. So I sent her this one and she hasn't signed up yet, yet you guys, but I have addressed every objection that she's had. So now I know it's only a matter of time until she decides that she really wants the extra money from home or she's cool with the way things are <laughs> like that's the way I look at it is like eventually they're gonna say okay like maybe she's right maybe I do need the extra income maybe it's worth a shot maybe my situation's not going to change if I don't make a change so um I wanted to share that one in there too because that's a popular one that I get I'm just not good at sales <laughs> so I'm always like perfect you'll fit right in I don't want you to be good at sales either like I'll just say something like that um and honestly I, I would think there's very few people on the Zoom right now that would raise their hand if I said, who thinks they're great at sales or who wants to be in sales? Like there might be a few of you, a handful that wanted to be in sales, but I would guess the majority of people do not want to go into sales. That's not like their dream job. And so I always let people know like, great, you're normal. Can't, and then I just carry on the conversation like they almost didn't say it at all. Um, so anyways, okay. So those are most of our objections. Again, there will be other objections that come up, but you guys can talk through them. I think voice messaging, if you're comfortable, is a really good way to overcome objections. I've had a lot of people recently tell me that they wanna wait until after they have their baby to get started with the business. And I literally will voice message them and just say, I totally get it. I know life is busy, but I also know what life is like with a newborn. And I really think that if you take the time to learn while you're pregnant, then when you have the baby and the baby's napping, you'll be able to bring in an extra income. Even with new mommy brain, you'll have already learned. <laughs> and so I'll just be very honest um, through my voice messages, you guys. And um, one other thing that I wanted to point out about just Tiff and myself and any other strong recruiter on the team is that one of the reasons that we consistently recruit is because we've made the commitment to this business that we're not going anywhere. I'm never desperate for someone to join me. Yes, we are all like in a place of like, we have huge goals. We need people to join. Like I need to fill in the chart or whatever. Okay. Um, but these are real people that you're dealing with that have real problems that need real money that need this real community that we have. And so having the dedication to this business, not giving yourself a, I'm going to give it 30 days and then we'll see if you have that mentality towards the business, you're not going to have a lot of people that join you because you talk to people differently when you know that you're here and that you're going to help them and that you might not have all the answers, but you'll do whatever you can to help them be successful. And that's the mindset that you have to go into recruiting with. Like, I, I don't know the perfect way to launch distributors. We're going to talk about launching distributors here in a second. We don't have a perfect method. Like I said, at the beginning, there's people that still join us that 
who knows what happened. They joined the witness protection program or whatever. We still have that. So we don't have a perfect system and there never, never will be because every person is different, has a different personality type, has a different work ethic, et cetera, et cetera. The list goes on. But if you guys are committed to the business that you know that you're here and that you have good intentions to help people reach their goals and that if they will stay in touch with you, you will do whatever you can to help them be successful when you have that kind of mindset, you will become a strong recruiter because again, people just need to trust you. And to trust you in a business like this means that they see that you're committed to it. They see that you're not going anywhere because that is the last thing they want is to join a business and then be left in the dark because nobody really knows what they're doing when they join. So, um, okay, I think... I don't even know what we were talking about next. Okay. Do I need an application? I saw this in the chat and you guys, we were going to keep the training kind of short tonight, but there are a lot of things that I want to make sure we go over and we at least have a recording for. So we're just going to keep going, answer some of these frequently asked questions that you guys have. Um, so for those of you that don't know what I'm talking about, when I say an application, um, you know, you can go to my Instagram or Tiffany's and you can see that we have a brand rep application. It's just a Google form. So you can go to Google Forms or you can download the Forms app on your phone. You can actually create a form for people to fill out an application to find out more information about your business. Okay, so this is something that probably started like what, a year ago, people started having applications. It kind of came around when TikTok became a big thing because it was a way to funnel people that were interested in making an extra income into one place, into a spreadsheet. Um, and so that's all an application is. It's just a place to gather someone's information that might be interested in making some extra money from home. Here's the thing. <laughs> if you don't have one, it's not gonna stop you from recruiting. I built this business for like nine years without one, you'll be just fine. But if specifically, if you are someone that is doing reels or TikTok or both, or is wanting to, I would recommend having it in your profile. And if you're not doing TikToks and Reels, it doesn't mean you won't benefit from it, but I don't just use it in conversations with potential distributors. If I have someone that comes from a host to post, I don't just send it to them and say, hey, fill this out. I'm already in a conversation with them. I'm not gonna waste time and take them to the application. The application is more for those people that might be following, that might be a little bit curious. And it, it's just a way to like make it look really legit and have them answer some truthful questions about why they really want to make extra money from home. So you can know a little bit about them. It's almost like an interview process, which I love because then I can tell where someone's coming from, why they might need it. And I can relate to them right off the bat in our conversation. Cause I already know a little bit about what they're going through or why they need the extra income. So again, don't stress <laughs> if you don't have one, it's not going to hold you back but it doesn't take that long to just recreate one of the ones like either TIFFs or mine, add your own little personality to it or whatever. It doesn't take that long to create. Um, and I'm actually gonna throw a video in the chat that walks you through how to create the application on Google Forms because I had never used Google Forms before I created my application. So I just got on YouTube and searched, how do I do it? And so I'm throwing a video. There's some other ones on there too, but that video is in the chat. And again, I pretty much just have it in my bios. And I don't know if Tiffany, if you wanted to add anything different about yours. I know you've also used yours to boost, mm -hmm. um, boost post too. So if you guys have one, you can do it for that. But again, don't stress yourself out over it, but just <laughs> so you, it's an eight minute video on how to create it. So if you guys want one, if you feel like it's something that's missing in your life, there you go. Yeah, I don't have anything else to add on on the application. Just like Alyssa said, do not stress on it. Like it's if it's over your head, don't worry about it. If it's something that you're really been interested in, then go for it. It doesn't take that long, really, truly to create. And it's just good for boosting. It's good as it's good as a point of direction on reels and TikTok, because that's the kind of point, especially on TikTok, to get them to your other social media platforms or to get their contact information. Um, so that's kind of, it just is a way of drawing them to like a, what's it called? Um, point of action type thing. Um, I'm going to jump into follow-up. Is that okay? Or did you have something else? Oh, this is a follow-up. Okay. Um, so guys, I would say that follow-up is pretty most likely like the 90% most important thing in your business, regardless. Like it's, 
it's something that is more important than just the planting of the seed. Like you cannot, like the day you plant the seed is, is not the day that you eat the fruit. And you need to remember that in this business. Again, you have unicorns, but that's very rare. And, um, you know, most businesses take at least five follow-ups to make a sell. And that's kind of the same thing with this. Like pe you saw people watched, people watched over and over and over again. Um, so getting in their inbox and following up with people um, is extremely important to remember that number one, people have lives. People have children that grab their phones and click on stuff. And then their parents didn't see that they had a notification. Maybe they really did tell you they were going to get on their website that night or get on your website that night. But guess what? Then they got busy. They got home. Maybe they had a bad night, whatever the case is. Um, we are, we are all humans and and people get busy and that doesn't mean that they're purposely ignoring you. People genuinely forget. And then there's people that have those obligations or, or things that get in their way of, you know, what's standing in their way of why they keep, like, they get so close to saying yes. And then they back off. That was me for six months. I was like, okay, maybe so. Eh, no, not really. Okay, maybe so. Uh, no, no, not really. For six months, I did that. Um, but what if my the lady who was going to sign me, like, quit following up? I probably wouldn't have joined right away. I, I just probably wouldn't have because she didn't ask me that one more time. Um, so just remember, like, you never know who truly needs this. You never know that one follow-up that's going to get them to actually sign up. And just because you follow up with them doesn't mean it always has to be, hey, it's, it's Tiffany. I'm following up with you again. Hey, it's Tiffany. I'm following up with you again. Like, just be real and personal. Like, sometimes I'll just send, you know, happy Friday. I hope you're having a good day. I mean, they know why I'm in their inbox. They know we've been talking about this. So I just tell them happy Friday. Um, or if it's their birthday, it's a great way. Sometimes it lands on their birthday and I'm like, Ooh, easy follow-up. Happy birthday. Um, if they are, if they, I say ignore, if they left me on red, that doesn't mean ignore. That just means they didn't respond to me. Um, but I always just say, I pray my message above didn't bother you. And a lot of times either people will number one, they come back and they go, Oh my goodness, I'm so sorry. I got busy. I forgot that thought. Or they're like, oh, well, I really wanted to, but, and then you hear their, you hear their reason as to why they didn't respond to you. So now you kind of know how to rebuttal it. Maybe they didn't have the money and they were nervous to say that. Maybe they, they were skeptical and they were nervous to say that, but now, now you at least know how to rebuttal it. Um, you know, an easy one is just, Hey, I'm checking in, I'm placing a few orders and I just want to check back with you. Um, one of my, my rules of thumb is if you have my, if you have my website, I'm going to check back with you at least within an hour and just say, Hey, I just want to make sure you found everything. Okay. On the website, just because you would be surprised when people get to your website and they instantly get cold feet. They're just like, okay, yeah, let me backtrack. Let me backpedal on that one a little bit. Um, and so by messaging them again, it just lets them know that they're wanted. So I get right back in their inbox within 30 minutes to an hour after they have my website just to check in. Because even with the promo codes that we have right now, a lot of the times they're, um, the first thing they say is, oh, well, I couldn't find the plus sign. And I was like, well, you could have asked me. I could have told you where it's at. But they, you know, they just don't. They just freak out. Then they freak out because they're just like, oh my God, that plus sign was just too hard to find. And so you just got to walk them through it. So freaking simple, guys. But you're robbing yourself of distributors if you don't get in their inbox. You don't follow up with people. Make sure you are following up. It is extremely important in this business. It's not follow up. I think a lot of times because you always hear follow up Friday, follow up Friday, follow up Friday. People think that you only can follow up on Friday. And that is incorrect. You can follow up more than that. And there's not that you're not spamming them. You're not being pushy. You're not bugging them. You're be you're checking in. Raise your hand if you've ever done some online shopping. Old Navy, I just know is real good at this because I, I like to shop. I like to put stuff in carts. It just makes it, it fuels my blood. And then I leave and I'm like, okay, I don't need to buy anything right now. I, I feel good because I just added it to the cart. Well, then guess what? I get an email that tells me hey, Tiffany, you left some stuff in your cart. I'm like, yeah, I know. I really wasn't going to buy it right now, but I was just trying to like help my shopping addiction. So the point is though, they don't care. They didn't, they didn't care about bugging you. 
they were following up with you guys, just like we follow up. This is a business. You're following up with your reps or your potential reps or following up with your potential clients. Follow up, get back in their inbox, just follow up with them. Um, and then do you have anything to touch base on that before I go into launching? Nope, proceed. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so the next thing I want to touch base on is what to do after you sign a distributor. What's next, right? So the very first thing you want to do is you want to be extremely positive. Okay. That's, I think a lot of times we sign distributors and then we kind of just like, oh my good, I signed a distributor. Now what? You kind of freak out. Guys, the same thing happens is the same thing that happened with you. Like you remember whenever you joined, unless you joined like Alyssa and I like forever ago and things have completely changed from way back then. But if you joined recently, the kind of the same process is going to happen with you. So number one, stay positive and be super, super energetic because they are going to feed off of your energy. Your new distributor is going to be just as excited as you are. If you're just kind of like, okay, well, here we go, then you're probably going to have a, okay, here we go, kind of distributor, guys. They're going to follow your lead. That's why you're going to be an amazing leader because you're going to lead them to success. Um, the first thing you're going to do is ask or tell them to download the app boards. This is an amazing new launch Um launch system that we have. And if you're not on board, you can contact your sponsor um, outside of this Zoom. But boards is where it is at. So you're going to download the app boards. You're going to get their email address and you're going to add them to the boards training app. I like to add them to the closing scripts and then the success squad training page app on boards. Sorry, my brain. Um, and then the other thing that guys, if you have the ability and you have someone that you can attach them to as a co-sponsor, do that. If you don't have somebody that is a co-sponsor in a place that you can connect them to, for example, let's say you're putting them, you are placing this distributor under maybe someone you're building as a Ruby. If that Ruby is working really well and they're plugged in, introduce them to that Ruby leg, introduce them to them so that they can be your backup person because guys, life happens. We're all human. You all got to eat at one time. And if for some odd reason they can't get a hold of you, now they know they have, they have two people on day one that they can be connected to, right? It versus like a team chat that just completely overwhelms them. They know they have at least two people. So if you have that place to connect them with a co-sponsor, do that. If not, go up. Go to, you know, Alyssa or I or your next Diamond F line and just introduce them. That doesn't mean that Alyssa and I are going to take over training for them, but that means that in the event they can't get a hold of you, they know they have somebody that they can reach out to if they are intimidated, intimidated by going to a team chat. Okay, so just having that extra person there that they can connect with is absolutely amazing. Um, and just, like I said, just be, just, just be so energetic and have fun with it. And if you're able to get them on a, a FaceTime or a phone call or what a Zoom or voice messaging, just so that they can hear or see your energy, they will feed off of what you feed them. Okay. So just make sure you keep that in mind, but I promise you, if you just go into it with open eyes, you will have so many people that just are launched in the best way. So that's all I got on that. Okay. Um, I'm just going to share, if you guys are, if you don't have the boards app yet, you haven't been added. This is something that we just started doing in the last like couple of weeks. Um, and so if you are not on there, message your sponsor when you get off the Zoom. Right now, the only way to add people is through email. So it's not like we can just share the link on the team page and everyone can download it yet. They're supposed to be working on that, but for now we have to load through email. But if you guys have no idea what I'm talking about with the boards app, you can go to my YouTube channel and I have a video. It's like five minutes long that shows people how to use the launch board. And you guys can use that video to send to your new distributors just so how they can see it. It's not anything fancy or perfect. You can make your own if you want, um, but you can actually send that video to your new distributors so that when they download the launch or the board 
Trips app, they will know how to actually use it and what it's for because it does so much more than train new distributors. It's actually a keyboard for your phone that will save all of your scripts and whatnot. Um, so that's what I've been doing recently. Um, I mean, I'm like staring at Hannah right here. She's been using the board. She's in it, been in like three weeks and assigned like 7 million customers. So I know it works if people follow it. Um, and I know Tiffany's had the same success. Like if, if people are willing to do the work, it works because it, it walks them through everything and it gives them a post every day and it gives them messages to send and all of that. And you're still going to be there to support them and answer their questions. They're still going to have questions but the boards app helps give them something to do every single day to help them grow their business and grow their confidence. So it's just an extra layer of support for helping people get started. Um, and the other thing that I would encourage you guys to get on here is to have a plan for when someone joins. I know Tiffany kind of just told you what your plan should be, be energetic and add them to the boards app and whatnot. Um, but have a plan, like know exactly what your message is gonna be when you sign up a new distributor. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. It can be just, hey, welcome to the team. First things first, like make sure you download these apps. I'm so excited to help you. Please stay in touch. This is one of the best ways. And I'll, I'll share in my chat the message that I use. Um, and I, I tweak it for, per the, for the person. But I often find that sometimes we will stop ourselves from signing distributors because we don't know what we're going to do if they sign. And so we just, we don't talk to enough people or we don't follow up enough because we're really not confident that we can actually train them if they start. So you don't have to have all the answers. You don't have to have the next six months of training planned out for your new distributors, but you need to have a plan for just like day one, because there's such a relief when I have someone join, I'm not like, oh my God, what do I do right now? I literally use the script in my phone and I send them that. And I'm like, okay, I can take a deep breath, let them do those things and I'll figure out you know, what I'm going to say next. So have one or two messages that you're going to kind of start someone off with, have some calls to action where you're going to ask them either, you know, share some things like, what are you struggling with right now? I'm going to help you make your first post, ask them a few questions or have them, um, you know, share their why for joining or have them download the boards app, some sort of call to action that they are going to do step-by-step -step with you. And then just go above and beyond to make sure they know that they're going to need you to be successful. I always want my distributors to know like, that's what I'm here for. But if I don't hear from you, I don't know how to help you. So be very clear about that. Um, and that's one thing you guys, for those of you that have ever joined and had someone not work, okay? <laughs> I think anyone on here that signed more than one distributor probably has a handful of people that joined it didn't work. I personally just want to know that I gave that person everything. I gave them access to a team page. I, I told them about our team trainings on Tuesday nights. I gave them access to the boards app now. I told them that I'm here for anything and everything they need. So if they choose to not take advantage of all of those things that I just offered up to them, that's on them. And it, it relieves a lot of stress because you guys, this is normal in the industry. Some people will work and some people won't. Some people will stay forever and some people will stay for a season or a lifetime. And so for my brain and the yellow part of me that doesn't want to ever see someone quit or feels bad when someone isn't showing up or successful and I'm going to take responsibility for that a lot of times. And it was, it's taken me a really long time to get over the fact that I can never be the perfect leader for every single person that joins me, but I can be available for them. I can offer my anything and everything, my time and energy to help them be successful, but I can't make them work. And so when I launch a new distributor, I want to make sure that I have offered all of those things to them because then I can take a little bit off my plate if they decide to not, to not work. Does that make sense at all? <laughs> Hopefully that, that kind of makes sense. But over the years, I've just had to find some sort of system that makes me feel co more confident in knowing that I, that I was there for them and I was willing to help them. And I gave them access to the tools they needed to be successful. And honestly, when I joined, we didn't have a lot of this stuff. We didn't have the connect app. We didn't have training pages. We didn't have a team page. We didn't know what we were doing. And so I know that we offer so much on our team if someone's willing to take advantage of it. So be really confident in that too. You could be a brand new distributor that signs up someone that goes ambassador next year. Okay. You all already have access to everything you need to train someone to be really successful because your job is really just to get them plugged into the things that are going to help them work their business. So um, I think that was it for launching new distributors. Um, so we were going to have you guys kind of work together tonight on some different tasks. I'm going to go ahead and um, 
stop the recording and you guys can answer, or you can ask questions in the, in the chat if you want to.